All right, welcome everybody to the Ace Bike Media Podcast. We are sitting in our new recording studio. Our? And yeah, well, it's, Do I get the, this? it's the Ace Bike Media Studio, and um, if you're listening to this, you don't have to listen further, but if you're watching, you'll notice that we're in my van, and we are in Brevard, North Carolina. We're out here for a mountain bike trip. John and Colin drove down here like 12 hours separately to come ride, <laughs> and then I came out and uh, met up with these guys, and first day in, and it's been good. Yeah, did a... Uh... Kind of a lot of riding. The van is sweet. It's cool to finally see it. I'm glad you said it's our new studio, so I guess I can probably borrow this for a little while, huh? <laughs> if you're using it for studio purposes. I didn't say it was our van. I said well, it was our studio. Okay, hypothetically, I need to do a mountain bike trip out in Colorado and also post a podcast. You you're not saying to, no. You had to come to North Carolina no. to get it. Okay. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Um. Yeah, it was a good first day of ride. Well, it's actually my second day. I rode alone yesterday. But, um, yeah, I'm glad glad we were all able to meet up. Yeah, and the weather is, like, really good. We actually have the door open, of the, the studio door open. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's very nice outside. Um, and this, people, this gives people another opportunity to realize that we're not the same person. Yeah, I feel like even some of the people that are our, like, closest followers still don't realize that yep. we're... The different like even some people that we interact with a lot i wonder if they know that we're different people yeah it's uh it's kind of funny it'll probably <laughs> go on for a long time yeah because we're not that big and maybe we should do a better job at how's it going how's it going how are you guys doing i like that shit right <laughs> <laughs> you guys in the was that an ad? Oh shit. We gotta hire a translator. <laughs> I don't even know what I was talking about. What was he talking about, John? Um, oh wait, John's not here. Good. The weather is good, <laughs> and uh, oh yeah, about us being the same people. Oh yeah, we are not the same people. I know. I feel like we should do the channel intro that we've been planning for over a year now. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, I think like part of it too, people will see us ride, and we'll kind of maybe look similar. <laughs> I, I have glasses though. So that's yeah, a, that's different. We look different when we well, Whatever. Ride. We should just, like, be color-coded or something. Like, you only wear blue and I only wear green. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good idea. Maybe we'll work on that. But, yeah, so we did a podcast. Like, when did we do that last one? Do you remember? It had to have been, like, summer, wasn't it? Was it summer? Or was it I don't. I, honestly, maybe? I don't even know. But we had less than 500 subscribers. And now we're at 1,100. So I guess that's pretty good growth. Yeah. I don't really know what I was expecting to be at at this point. But um, I guess, like, my first question is, like, why did we start this channel? And what, like, do you have, like, a where, a goal? Or, like, where do you want to see this even go? Um, I don't know. With a lot of things, I don't really have, like, a plan. I just kind of cross little bridges and see where that one leads. So I don't really have, like, a big plan. Just create content and see what happens. But um, I think it's just, like, a natural thing that happened because, like, we've created content for a long time together. Like, over 15 years we've been creating content, so, in some form. I mean, it's always kind of been focused around videos. Yeah. You know, we don't write that much. And, like, <laughs> yeah. photos we, we've always shared, but I feel like the photos weren't ever as good as the videos. Yeah. I don't know, for me, like, when I think about it, like, yeah, we have always done videos and stuff, and then, like, it only made sense for us to, for us to start this channel. And then, like, I guess I didn't expect to, like, be trying to, like, grind out videos just to put out content. Yeah. And, like, that's so weird to me. And, like, part of me is, like, I don't even know if this is what I want to do. I just, like, ride my bike, and, like, sometimes it's almost like maybe the recording is becoming too serious for me, but I still like doing it. I don't know. It's just weird time yeah. management and i'm like should i just be putting out like 
videos when we ride together or I do cool stuff. Yeah, like I don't, I don't, I don't want to have that model of like just putting videos out for views. So we got a lot of videos out just to, yeah. just, I want to just put out cool stuff. For me, it's been, there's, it's almost like for some things, it's been like a flip side thing. Like some, some videos I just like wake up in the morning, I'm excited to go do and they just happen. But I get like, I ride a lot and I, I'm like, I should film this, but I just don't want to. And like, and I feel like if you have that mentality, it's not going to be good anyway. So it's probably not really worth doing, but there are some things like working on my backyard trail. I think if I didn't film that, I wouldn't have done it. Not that I did it for the views or anything weird like that. Like I just wanted to build this trail. Like I needed a project. It was right when like lockdown started and everything. But I think filming it is what motivated me to actually get it done. Because I had started that like a couple years beforehand and I just never did anything with it. So I think the videos helped. Yeah, the videos do help get me out sometimes. And sometimes there are like ideas that I have that I'm like, oh, that's cool. I should do that. And then I do it and it's cool. And there's sometimes there's videos I'm like really don't want to do this, but I feel like I'm just doing it to put a video out. Mm. And I, I think I want to stay away from that because I don't know if that fits into my schedule. And it, like, I don't even know if it's really beneficial to us. I don't really want yeah. to put out like just that content. Yeah, I think if you're doing it three times a week, just doing a video to put it out, like that might be beneficial in the long run. Well, I'm sure but it is beneficial. Just like, I just it, don't have the time for for no, maybe but those gains that we would get out of that. What I'm saying is, like, if you have, like, a week where you're like, well, we haven't posted something in two or three weeks. Like, I need to do something just to do it. I don't think that's the right mentality. I think if you're going to go down that route, it's like you got to do it, like, every couple days. Yeah. Which, yeah. And that's actually, lot. so this actually kind of, like, leads into another question I have because this is something I think about. Um, more recently, like, on Pink Bike, there's been a lot of discussion over, like, <laughs> influencers role in like mountain bike business and like companies giving paying youtube people Mm -hmm. more money than professional racers and like sometimes a lot more money yeah and i know there's a lot of people that are salty about that and i'm not saying we're on that level at all but that question got me thinking like how much have we influenced people like throughout me and you being friends for 15 years bmx mountain bike Mm -hmm. doesn't matter and I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, I've actually influenced a lot of people to get yeah. into the sport. Like, I've, I personally, I feel like I've gotten bikes sold for brands mm-hmm. just because people see my stuff that I've done even before we started this channel. And we're like, that looks really cool. I'd love to try that. I'm like, yeah, I mean, you should, especially mountain biking. Like, anybody can pick it up. Yeah. So, like, I'm uh, like, I just thought that was really interesting. Like, I, now that I think about the question, I feel like I've sold and made a difference in the sport. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. I think it it doesn't take a lot. And like to your point about like the influencer thing, it does suck if I don't know. Like if if you're looking at it from a brand's perspective and you're allocating your marketing dollars, you're going to get more return, I feel, out of paying an influencer because yeah. people are watching it because they're thinking about buying something. Yeah. Whereas like a racer is out there doing it, but like one, the live audience isn't very big, but then the people are watching it on YouTube or on TV or whatever, and, like, your little <coughs> logo even on their jersey is not... Yeah. Yep. It's not doing a whole lot for that brand. And even the best racers out there, like, I mean, I feel bad for them if they're not making a lot of money. Yeah. And they're giving a lot of money to YouTubers, but no one cares what brand... I Like, I follow racing really close. Mm. You don't, right? No. And you follow YouTube real close, right? Mm-hmm. So you obviously see a lot more exposure by who's riding what bikes. In racing, you're just like, oh, yeah, that dude's going really fast. Yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Especially for a casual viewer. Really, the only way you know is if you see a turquoise bike, you know that's Yeti. Well, <laughs> and the other thing is I think, like, and I've talked to you about this a little bit, is being able to relate to the person uh, in the video. Like, I can't yeah. relate to Aaron Gwynn. Not like yeah. I mean, in well, a, and he's in a, a, he's an interesting one too because he's not that good at social media. Yeah, but he's Aaron Gwynn, so he's gonna make millions. Yeah, but my point is like re- you can obviously relate because he's riding a bike and like yeah. we're all riding bikes. But at the same time, it's like I'm not like oh he's got that sick bike like maybe that'll make me a really you know make me take it to the next level. It would be like me seeing some like me watching one of your videos and being like oh this guy just got this new bike and he compared it to his old bike which was you know or whatever whatever it is or he got this new fork and it 
that made him a little more comfortable on his bike. And I feel like that's a lot more relatable for me watching it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, so not related to us because we don't have that big of an audience. But just thinking about the overall discussion, like there's a reason that the YouTubers get a lot of money and they probably should because they probably move a ton of bikes. Yeah. Like I'd be willing to bet that Seth probably saved Diamondback. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, what he's done for them is, <clears throat> is crazy. Well, and Diamondback's done a good job, I think, because not only with Seth, like, take him out of the equation. They've sponsored, like, smaller YouTube channels, too, like, pretty small <coughs> small ones, like, especially compared to Seth's stuff. Yep. But I don't know. I think the influence thing is weird. Like, some, it's not exactly the same, but I keep thinking about this. Like, there's days I go to the pump track, and there's little kids there that are, like, in tears because they're so happy about the time that they had at the pump track and they had never been there. And they were like, those people there were so nice. It was the best time I've ever had. And I hear them in the parking lot saying that when they're leaving. And it's like, that kid just found a lifelong hobby or, you know, decades long hobby or whatever you want to say. But if they would have went there and like somebody was a jerk to them, they might have never gotten back on a bike ever again. And that's something I think not just influencers, just people that ride should consider. I mean, if you're... I mean, as a as like a general rule, I just try and be nice to everybody all the time. And <laughs> maybe that more people need to hear that. But I, I do know what you're saying. Because like you can go to a skate park and people aren't always the nicest. Yeah. But I, that's like the BMX and skateboard community. Yeah. Whereas I feel like the, the mountain bike community is a little more welcoming. Yeah. And that's good because we don't need more dicks in this world i agree but there are like some people that show up that just like aren't very friendly especially like younger kids and i think it's just like a trickle yeah. down thing well, but then you, it's you like, can't expect like teenagers to be super cool yeah and, like, but when they but my point is when they are yeah like it makes a big difference i think speaking of like influencing purchases i'm really good at influencing you <laughs> um like you follow my suggestions pretty well so for the most part yeah yeah <laughs> I mean, I had nothing to do with this van at all. <laughs> this is the van you wanted, so I just bought Yeah, this it. <laughs> is the van that I built several times on the Ram website, and then Andy bought it. Um, but, uh, yeah, so when are you going to get a new mountain bike? Because I'm sure everyone on YouTube wants to see more bikes. Yeah, well, the thing is, is those are the videos that do really well, too. <laughs> yeah, they, they really do. I think uh, quite a few people have realized that people click when you buy a new bike. Yeah, um, I bet some of the bigger YouTubers like they could buy a new bike and have it paid for by the ad revenue too. Oh yeah, like or at least sure. a good portion of it. Yeah, I don't know. I do need a new bike, especially like today. Just, I don't know. I break it a lot less than John does, and it's held. Me, it's served me better. <laughs> John is a monster on a bike. Like, John, do you want to come in here, or do you want to just sit there and drink for a while? Well, you can come. John's in here. out of beer, so I guess he's gonna come come chat with us. We got to share a mic. John and I are sharing a mic. If you watch our channel, then you've probably seen John getting loose. I thought you were asking if John's watched the channel. It is a good question. Do you watch? Do you the watch? Channel? You don't watch the channel, do you? No, you're in. Ha- you're in like half of the original videos we put out. Oh yeah. Um. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I did a whole video on you. Yeah, I know. I did uh, a yeah, made... John sucks at bikes. I think. I think that's the name of the video. Yeah, and it's just that made you me look really good. Yeah, it's just you. No, you are good. But I just did a. I, like you're so good at like fucking breaking up when you shit. ride and breaking yeah. shit that I was like I could do a whole video, and it was all it's clips just from one year. Yeah, like it wasn't even like. I know. But it could be a yearly thing though. I feel it like. should be probably a yearly thing. I don't know. My bike burn. My bike didn't break today. That was good. We, we're we going to ride Bailey's tomorrow, so <laughs> yeah, it's I don't want to put that voodoo on you, though, because you have had a lot of bad luck. What was your biggest crash, John, on a mountain bike? Probably Colorado, <laughs> where I blew up my whole rear suspension and cracked my rear wheel. While racing? No, it was on a transfer stage. Yeah, I just love hearing you say I destroyed my bike and my body on a transfer stage. Yeah, yeah I did do that. What the worst part is, is you were literally like... A hundred feet from the start line. Yeah, I know. Like, you. <laughs> some guy dared me to do it. it wasn't well, me. Well, so well, don't, you, don't, don't, like, don't. Can you, can you like actually like it? It was probably like a thirty second total start to finish. Like, what actually happened? 
we we dropped in on the transfer stage and our friend Ryan was like, dude, I dare you to just send that double or the step down or whatever it was. It was like a double step down. It was big yeah, and it was, it was a blind. knuckle to knuckle was, step yeah. down. And I thought we had already done it the next or the previous day. And so I was like, yeah, I already did that, man. So then I went and I hit it. And <laughs> it's like 20 feet up in the air looking down. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah, no, you and were. just knuckled it. And but you were like flopped. 20 feet up in the air and 20 feet shorter than you needed to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I knuckled it. Yeah. Like I was, it was close to. It wasn't 20 feet. It wasn't it was 20 feet, like but I like. Cased it like harder than yeah. ever. And like. Because it rebounded th- and I flew over the bars. It's not on video, and I've told a thousand people, but I literally was right behind you, and I saw all of the air in your bike <laughs> yeah. completely escape. Like it made a I big s- loud pop. Yeah, too, there was a. It? I yeah. saw your shock explode. I saw oil and air literally shoot out of your rear shock. Wait, wait. Yeah, so that was wild. did you hit it the day before? <clears throat> he didn't. I know I he thinks he did. Colin hit. We did. We did ride the trail. Yeah, me- but we didn't do that jump. I, like I don't even think well, honestly. Unless you're really good and on a full downhill rig, that jump wasn't doable. Yeah, so me and Colin Kozik were side by side going down that, and we both hit one of the, one. Jump you guys on did that hit trip. a jump, yeah, yeah, because we we both, all did, I think. Yeah, but that we, wasn't it. And then we like landed. And we we're like, why did that suck? And I'm like, oh yeah, we hit that, and it just wasn't that fun. Like I, do you I remember the name was, of the trail? That was at Trestle Bike Park for anyone listening. It yeah, it was like right off the lifts, right at the top somewhere. I don't know. Yeah, it was a brand new. I think they were just making it so we could yeah. transfer to the. Yeah, but they weren't the like they didn't thing. finish it in time. They were like finishing it the day before. Yeah, they had some it, it just, yeah something. something screwed up. Yeah, that, that was probably my biggest biggest crash. <laughs> yeah, that right was there. gnarly. What's your biggest crash, Colin? Uh, he doesn't crash. I don't. Yeah, I don't crash too often. <laughs> but wow. wind, wind rock, wind rock, you flat out skidded across the whole root section on your stomach. No, it was rocks. It, it was roots, 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 roots and rocks. Yeah. yeah, that was that one shook me mm. because I felt like I was going good, and that was one of those where it just like it, like I don't know what happened. Bike was just gone, and it was mm. off camber rock root section. It's going fast, but that one definitely shook me. Mm. Like it made me feel weird. But biggest one. Um, the one that comes to mind is Marquette. Uh, first oh, time riding man. Southern Cross Trail. Yeah, I made it like two corners in and something with some like shale rock and a root. I, my pedal caught a root, front wheel slid out, both at the same time. And I went down super hard and like, yeah, I had to get like... Hospital? Yeah. Yeah, I got stitches. But like, the thing was, I didn't realize that like, I had chunks of, like, palm muscle hanging out of my glove. Oh, and, like, gross. after I, like, kind of came to and, like, was like, Dude, okay, shake it off. Yeah, why, I, why do you say that? Yeah, I saw, that? well, I saw blood, <laughs> and I'm like, wait, I'm bleeding? Where am I bleeding from? My hand hurt. I think they say but that I, in a Pearl Jam song. I had, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not super familiar with Pearl Jam, to be honest. <laughs> I'm just calling out songs. To but, me. yeah, so my, my glove was ripped open, and I had, like, literally, like, palm muscle, like, oozing out. Oh, yeah, it was really gross. That was a bad one. So I, I got you on this. I've never went to the hospital from a mountain biking crash. Nice. No, well, yeah. don't say that yeah. now. That's fine. Wait, I, I, I've tamed it down, honestly. Have I had any crashes with you guys that... Nothing you can... mountain biking. Yeah. BMX. Yeah. I might be, I will been to the hospital for BMX, well, that's for sure. Yeah. Andy, what's your worst? I know your worst. For mountain biking? No, just ever. <laughs> okay, talk about both. <laughs> Wait, really? Talk about Wait, both. If it's the worst crash ever, like on anything, like not mountain biking related, I guess more mountain bike related. Oh, okay. Yeah, Andy, say. tell us your worst mountain bike crash. Well, sometimes I feel like I've been pretty lucky because, like, for the most part, I haven't like broken too much. Um, but when I think about it, I have actually quite a few. But the worst one was definitely Wind Rock, and I kind of got to like throw the two things in one because they happen so close. Yeah. So, like, we were going down, and it was my first time ever on an actual downhill bike, and I was, it was taking me a little bit to get used to it. Like, it was at least, like, the turning and stuff, and then it was super wet out, and uh, we were, like, going down, and I put my foot down, just, like, on the trail, like, on a rock garden, and 
just hyperextended my knee really bad. And, like, I knew, like, I wasn't going to ride anymore that day. But we were still, like, we still had, like, two-thirds of the mountain to get down. So I caught up to everybody and, like, told them, like, oh, I got to take it easy. But Windrock, there's a lot of sections you just can't really take easy. Like, you kind of you kind of just got to do them. And so, like, I had that mentality going down. And, like, right towards the end, there was, like, a hill with, like, a blind turn. And it just was not. I didn't know it turned and by the time I realized it was too late to correct like I in my mind in that split second I thought about correcting and turning left and I just I knew at least you know going back who knows maybe I would have made a different decision but at the time I was like I can't I, I just don't have time so basically I went into this drainage ditch and just like landed right on my shoulder like a whole rush of leaves blew into my helmet and uh, so that that's that also in bad. one of our videos. Yeah, so that one that we do have footage of that one. Yeah, uh, I think that's in our. I think the video is like Knoxville trip video. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah that so that one bad. that one really scared me. I mean, I've had worse injuries riding BMX, and like I've broken things. Right, you know, well, I broke my ribs. That's all I've broken on a mountain bike. But yeah, but I mean, you did almost die on a BMX bike. Dude, they told me I was. I, the crazy thing is, and like, I, I don't, I'm not to get like political about it, but like, they told me straight up after crashing at this skate park that I would have died if I wasn't wearing a helmet. And this skate park doesn't require helmets, like indoor skate park. Well, at the time they did. When yeah. that happened, it did. We were pretty young. I don't. We were yeah. like what, fourteen yeah, maybe? Now they don't. Now they don't. Yeah. But we were young, and yeah, you went straight to your head, and it was bad. Yeah, it was like I don't remember. <laughs> I know you. Don't. I know you don't, but I do, and it was terrifying. Well, I didn't know what was going on for like a week, like literally like a week. Like I was incoherent. Yeah, I believe it. I mean, yeah, you fell. Dude, I hope you don't get that CTE stuff. No. Yeah, kind of I don't need you to be like what running around your house naked with a shotgun, shooting at the neighbor's house, like <laughs> no, someone else who had CTE. <laughs> He was running outside in front of his house, with... naked with a shotgun. <laughs> naked with a shotgun. <laughs> Sounds so fun. I think he was shooting into his own house. <laughs> oh, well, that's... Hey, I, could, I could be hey, wrong. Don't that shouldn't that. be illegal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That shouldn't be illegal. <laughs> okay, Indy's an exposure, <laughs> but... Like, like, fake bullet holes on our car all the time. <laughs> I, I thought this was America. Yeah, yeah real, well... Uh, in our last podcast, we talked about um, <clears throat> how I was really trying to get you up to Marquette, and you finally got to go up there. Mm-hmm. What did you think? Did anything stand out? Was it? What, did I overhype it? Did it was it basically what you expected? Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely what I expected. I guess I didn't really expect the big rock rolls, and and when I did see them, I didn't expect to do any of them. So that was kind of like a little bit. I didn't realize that was a thing, like because even here where they got some gnarly trails, like there there's not rock rolls like that. It's yeah. all just like creek bed stuff. Yeah, I mean, like, one-to-one, like, you can find trails here that are gnarlier than these trails with the rock rolls or at least on the same level, but Mm -hmm. just a different type of thing. And so that that was kind of surprising. I was, like, pumped to ride that kind of stuff. Yeah. I I do think Marquette maybe uses the terrain a little bit better. Like, when they see a big rock, they put the trail to it. Here, sometimes they go through it, sometimes they go around it. I think the high speed of these trails makes them crazier than... In Marquette, because it's kind of low speed in Marquette, yeah. With the rock gardens, like these, you're you're going full speed. You know, you're picking up, going straight down. You know, yeah. It's no, that's not, true. I actually terrible. didn't even consider that. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, I just thought of it, it is now, faster. So, yeah. Wow, John, <laughs> well, you need to bring you in on these more. Man, you're you're on point right now. <laughs> man, man, you're like twelve beers deep, deep, and you're really good. <laughs> but yeah, I'd, but otherwise, just like being in Marquette was cool. Like I'd never gone there. My whole life in Wisconsin and never gone there, so like well, for it's anything. In Michigan, so. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. my, my I mean point... the UP is Wisconsin's playground. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's basically we upper Wisconsin. It. Yeah, I don't. I'm but so my point sorry is to Michigan. Clo- <laughs> or people so, in the UP. <laughs> it's so close. Like I, like when I moved to Charlotte, I would drive four hours for like a networking event or something, you know, stuff like that, and you know, I just didn't take advantage of that. That'd be my suggestion to people, like, take advantage of where you live because it's not until you leave that you realize that you weren't taking advantage of it. Yeah. Marquette is a hidden gem. Well, I mean, it is. 
It's starting to get a lot bigger, but as yes, it yeah. should though. I mean, it's a good community, mm. and the trails are, are like really, really awesome. Mm. And like I was telling uh, Austin today, the thing that makes it kind of cooler than here, in a way, is that they like embrace free ride there. There's like zero free ride here. Yeah. Well, mm. maybe Sesnu Park will be. Mm. A bit. Yeah, but it's gonna be more public, isn't it? Yeah, but. But I like, like Marquette has legit free ride. Like they yeah. don't map it exactly, but you can go find it. It's not yeah. hard to find once you're out in the woods. Yeah, I think and it's built it with treated wood too. Yeah, <laughs> that was all treated wood out there. So yeah, it's gonna be they're, there they're, for a while. Yeah, I mean it's it's good and it's gnarly. They don't hold anything back when it comes to the free ride there, which I think is really cool. And that's unique for the Midwest. Yeah. But yeah, we're in your your van right now. This is your third van. What happened to your first one? Do you want to talk about it? <laughs> Well, to be fair, I know what you're it's talking a story, about. It's a story that like I, I mentioned in the comments when you posted this okay, video, and then okay. someone said they wanted to hear the story. Okay, there's there's some qualifiers here. There are no qualifiers. Are we past the statute of limitations on this? <laughs> I, you know what? No one got hurt, and it really wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't, but I will vaguely say it was a skate park in the Midwest and not get more detailed on okay, where exactly that's fair. it was. Are you wanted by the law? Do you know the story, John? No. Okay. So, Colin and I were like on a trip. I think we were at Madison Four Seasons Skate Park. God damn it, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but, but that's not where this incident happened. That is not where it happened. Okay, and then we were taking a weird route home. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, so... Where we went to a different skate park that we won't name. Yeah, so... We, Colin and I used to like just take random trips to like skate parks and like drive hours just to ride like a new skate park. And we, so after going to one skate park, we went to another one and it was kind of cold out and it was dark out. It was in the winter time. We thought they had lights. So we thought we were going to ride it. Yeah. So we showed up and the, no lights and nobody was there. And we were like, oh, we should. We, we could ride this if we shine the van lights on it. So I drive my van, and it, it was a 1990 Ford Aerostar, by the way. And I, so I drive it, like, up onto the skate park because, like, I forget what we wanted to ride. But then when we got on the skate park, we were like, well, I don't know. This isn't going to work very well. So we're like, let's just go. So I was like, well, we can go out this other side of the skate park, and there's like a hill there, and we could just drive there. It would be funny, and it would be cool. And so I like, I started going fast, like a little faster. But to be fair, it was probably still only like 10 miles an hour. I mean, about as fast as you want to drive a car through a skate park. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> or I should say drive a Ford Aerostar <laughs> through a skate park. Well, and I'm glad put it, it. I'm glad you weren't going faster. It could have been eight miles an hour for real. Like honestly, it wasn't that fast, but eight miles an hour is still pretty fast when you hit the blunt end of a grind rail <laughs> that we didn't see oh, we did into the radiator. Oh man, straight through. Well, so it you was, just leaked coolant all no, over the skate. No, no, it wasn't coolant. What it was? Oh. Well, there might have been coolant. Yeah. Because it well, went through the, the bumper, radiator. the crinkle shield, and then it went... I know it went through the tranny cooler because tranny oh. fluid did leak out. And so... And then we were like, well, we can't stay here. <laughs> like, we can't stay here. So we, like, drove the van back to, like, a parking lot down the road, and it's, like, slipping gears because there's no <laughs> tranny fluid in there. And, it, and it, at this point, it had, like, 180,000 miles on it. But, you know junior year of high school probably i it may have been sophomore year yeah it could have been because actually i don't think i wrote a lot junior year uh it might i don't know because i don't think i was old enough you got your license before me but i mean maybe it was junior year well, either way, yeah what, maybe it was i don't know who gave you a license <laughs> hey i did pretty good i'll tell you who i was in driving school with did not do very well I'll tell you who that was later. I don't really want to call him out on here. So anyway, so I didn't have money to like buy a new car. Cause, you know, I got this van from my mom, you know. And so that was, oh, it was Thanksgiving. Because it was right before, the, cause it was Thanksgiving break that I didn't do any, I didn't go see family. I didn't, 
my dad and I worked on that van and got it back to actually looking pretty good. I actually didn't know you fixed it. Well, maybe I did. I don't know. I just figured that was the end of that van. It lasted one more winter, I think, okay. or through the winter at least. And then it was like when I got rid of it, it was when scrap value was really high. So I got like $650 for taking it to the scrap yard. Nice. Jeez, All right. So this is a question I'll actually ask like both of you guys and you can decide who goes first. Like, what is your weirdest trail story or, like, experience out in the trails? Like, something you saw? I, I actually took this question from a Pink Bike podcast because I thought it was actually a pretty in- interesting conversation. Like, have you guys ever experienced something weird on the trail or just something to that effect? Well... Had something weird happen to you? I think... I wouldn't say weird, <clears throat> but the craziest thing, I think, to happen to me was uh, when I was in Alaska... And we were like riding this trail system and this video is on the channel too. I was riding this trail system in Anchorage and it was going very well. And then all of a sudden I rounded a corner and there's a big ass moose standing there and it looked right at me. And in the video, it doesn't look like I was that close because I was filming it on the 360 camera, but I would say 10 yards away. Maybe it, yeah, it was that's close. really close. And uh, it just kind of took its time getting off the trail. So that one, that one was really crazy. I would say, like, I was probably a little more scared when we had to pass that horse that we saw in Pisgah. Um, yeah, I was really close to that horse. Yeah, that was, At I high think, rate a little speed. more scary because, like, I think horses are fucking crazy. Yeah, I honestly am surprised that horse. On the horse. Yes. Yeah. And she was actually super cool about it. I actually came around a blind corner at, like, 30 miles an hour. And the horses were just standing there. Like, luckily, there was a dude in front of me, and he narrowly missed the horse. It was a bummer because uh, that downhill was going so well. Yeah, but yeah, it still went fine though. Like yeah. they were the horse people were totally cool about it, actually, which is weird because uh, I don't usually think equestrian people are like. Yeah, like the people they, they need to get off their high horse. <laughs> <laughs> like the people today. get it, John. Yeah. Do you get that one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. but he doesn't know what a question is. I thought you were is. asking me a question. <laughs> no, no, no. So I guess my question goes to you, though. Like, have you had weird... You I know you've had a weird trail experience here. I know you oh. and Andy share a, a, yeah, an, well, an unfortunate some, incident, but has there been anything... Some guys that may have <clears throat> partook in too many amphetamines busted a window and stole my wallet. Why is your wallet sitting on the front seat of a car? Because we were Because alcohol? In- no, because we had just done a 4,000-foot climb, right? We did claw hammer. No, no. Oh, yeah, we did that in the morning. Yeah, we, we did that yeah. in the morning, and then we went and go to ride uh, DuPont. Yeah, and I was t- I I had just got back into mountain biking because my rotator cuff was torn, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go down to Andy, go see Andy or whatever. So I rented a bike, and I was just kind of like, dude, that was intense, you know? And so I, like, fell asleep. On the ride to DuPont, which probably isn't that far. What is it, like? 20 minutes, 20 minutes maybe. Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, dude, we're here. And I'm like, oh, crap, okay. So I, like, emptied my pockets. I just, like, threw it on the floor of the car. So my wallet was visible. I guess it was my fault-ish. I don't know. I guess. It had to have been, because to be fair, there was, like, 20 grand worth of other shit in the car that was not Whatever. stolen. Is there anything else you can think of, John, that's happened on the trails this Kind of weird. Did you, you never saw any, like, um, like the Bigfoot or anything? I feel like if any of my friends believe in Bigfoot, it's you. And I feel like I you maybe have I don't believe spotted in Bigfoot. him. Okay, what do you believe in? Tell me what you <laughs> said. Right, I, believe, I, believe I, believe I believe in climbing this flat earth every day <laughs> and doing some downhill. Okay. <laughs> uh, but no, for real. Anything. For the record, I do not believe that the earth is flat. Okay. We were worried about you for a Man, while. Well, I just said, I just said, I don't doubt that it could be. I'm just, I do. Some, there's some, I don't know. Okay, anyways, did anything weird? Look into it. <laughs> Look into it. <laughs> <laughs> but for real, anything? No, not just like deer and, or like, uh, oh. if, if I don't have headphones in, like so I remember climbing Alpine Valley and stuff, and if I'm there, it's like only me that was in the parking lot. I'll get like a creepy, so just like a feeling, yeah. you know, but nothing too serious. It's not really a big deal, but that time your shoe came off, 
during the race. That was weird and kind of it funny. Was. That, that was very that was, funny. I was going to say. But that's not really that. the kind of experience I'm talking about. I know. You want to get serious. I was trying to get down and dirty. And okay, so when I heard this question on Pink, oh, Pink Bike, white zombie? I was trying to think of like things that have happened to us, and I was trying to go deep. And this is, you're going to remember this one. This is way back in our BMX days. Oh, was it when we were at that skate park driving my van in it? <laughs> no. No, actually. This is, this is, uh. Oh, I think I remember. Okay, so I had my own dirt jumps. I built by myself super sweet dirt jumps. I, built, I started building them when I was like probably 13. And I was grounded a lot, so I had a lot of time on my hands to just escape to the woods by my house. So you're telling me you're a bad boy. <clears throat> I'm a real bad boy. It wasn't even on land I owned either. So, I mean, <laughs> you can make your judgments, but I'd say I'm a bad boy. But uh, Andy actually came to ride with me in the summer once. I rode there. Did you ride there? Oh, you're nuts. You wouldn't even do that now. And you, <laughs> yeah. Dude. I won't even, like, ride to the from, gas station Agu- a half mile down the road. <laughs> from Aguana really to my parents' house. <laughs> wow. Okay, what much. happened to you, man? <laughs> <laughs> that was like seven miles. Yeah, dude. Today you were like, oh, man, four miles? Shit. <laughs> Did I? I With gears? <laughs> <laughs> that weren't working because his uh, derailleur no, was... They, were, they, they just... It was bad when me and John were riding yeah, up. Dude, My gears I, I was stopped waiting for him. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, actually, it's pretty weird that you're... Opposite day. <laughs> yeah, it is opposite. Your day. fitness is usually better. But oh, anyways... Dude, I'm going to be honest. Today, I've just been, like, chill. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I, I noticed. I wasn't, like... I noticed. I, I wasn't really, like, giving it all today. It's okay. We'll give it all tomorrow. But anyways, yeah, so, so this story. So Andy came to ride with me, and you had a backpack... Yeah. I don't know what was in the backpack. There was tools and a cell phone. Like okay. an old Did you have phone. camera stuff though? No, not. Yeah, cuz this is like kind of before like before we... cameras existed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you had a big backpack and like so we noticed pretty early on that this weird kid in the neighborhood was like hanging out way at the top of the hill like trying to play army man and this kid was in high school. Probably a freshman or no, he had to have been a sophomore or something because we were already in high school. That's weird. And this kid was just hiding in the woods watching us. I think he th- really thought we didn't see him, but it wasn't that difficult. Like, he was, yeah, like the best way I could describe him is the weird kid in high school who doesn't talk to anybody but wears camouflage every day. Very strange. And then we were like, I think we went to <laughs> buy fireworks. Is that what we went to do? We rode our bikes yeah, to buy yeah, fireworks. They had fireworks at the McDonald's. <clears throat> yeah, yep, <laughs> yep. And you left your backpack hidden in the brush. Because we were like, I was like, dude, no one, no one's yeah, going to come like over Yeah, we like took time to hide it. Yeah. And it was at a point where I was like, he can't see what, what we're hiding down here. Because it was like a blind part of the hill. He was at the top. And I was like, there's no way he sees it. And we, I, I assume we thought he left already. Because we just stopped paying attention. Yeah. He was creeping on us for a while. And then, uh, yeah, we rode to get fireworks and we came back and the backpack was gone. I just and then that. Andy called the cops. And they're like, oh. That sucks. You lost your backpack. Who built these trails? No. Yeah. And then they started like trying to get on me about. I was like, I don't know. Someone we just found them. I was like, <laughs> wow. Like, dude, they did not give a single shit about the backpack that was stolen. They were like, who dug this? I'm like, don't fucking worry about it. Wait. So did you get your backpack back? No. No. And no. there wasn't anything much of value in there, but we were like 13, so like. It did seem valuable, and my mom wasn't happy that. No, I, they, I remember your mom was very pissed. F the police! I just want to say, you can cut that in off. regard, <laughs> no, no, it's fine. That's fine. You have a Blue Lives Matter sticker in your truck. Yeah. I do. <laughs> in regards to this kid, um, we were like two miles from where that Slenderman stabbing was. So, like, oh, that's a good point, dude. That was actually in my coworker's front yard, dude, like, like literally, like. T- 10 feet off of his yard. I pointed out, like, when I have friends come up with me, like, to visit Wisconsin, I'm like, that road's where the Slender Man murders happen, or not murder, but, like, where the- that happened. Yeah. Oh, now that you brought that story up, I don't know if I can say his name on here or anything. I doubt he's listening to it, but... Do you want to just say a first name? We can edit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, I, I was that. You think I can say that? I don't yeah, know. no, we'll probably get sued now. 
But we're yeah. probably trying to yeah, we'll we'll change, probably get us a change our logo or something. <laughs> change our name. <laughs> uh, Ace he... Black Media is offensive. <laughs> so there were the Bajas. Yep. By the the, the Bajas are a uh, were well, were now they're plowed down and there's yeah condos they're like condos there. yeah but they're Unhaunted haunted they're... Indian burial <laughs> <laughs> yeah right which is where our jumps were <laughs> yeah so there were dirt jumps there but then. We stopped riding there, and a bunch of kids built Baja, or they called it the Bajas 2 or whatever, and it was by the railroad bridge by Walgreens and stuff in Maguanago, kind of. Okay. You know, that big, that big cement one. I that, didn't actually know there were jumps down there, but yeah, yeah I know where that is. Yeah, it's, it was down I guess there. You're, you're younger than us, and I was probably not BMXing when yeah. you were doing that. Yeah, yes. But we, we went down, I went down there with somebody, I forget, but we were riding around a little bit, and then all of a sudden this dude pops up over the hill like he was there while we were there and uh he had a whole axe and he was just chopping down a tree and it was yeah maybe he was that kid in the woods that uh, stole my backpack no i know see i know i, I know who who that was i don't i don't know what house he lived in our subdivision but i knew i knew who it was um <laughs> this is gonna be this is so litty <laughs> this is <laughs> too lit to quit <laughs> um but yeah we're gonna do bailey's tomorrow for the ride today, we you rode. Ever had Bailey's from a shoe? Nope, can't say I have. You guys what? don't know that. No, I've had Irish car video? bomb. Old Greg. Oh. I feel like you're talking about alcohol, but I'm yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah, so I far was. out of that to- <laughs> a million times removed from that. Someone, if that listens to this, <clears throat> might know. Okay. I don't know. Well, we rode Dupont today, and the we rode five listeners that you guys. Good have. one, John. <laughs> hey, we have. Hundred of listeners, <laughs> <laughs> hundreds and hundreds. Nobody has more hundreds of listeners than we do. <laughs> Tremendous amount of hundreds. Yeah. The best hundreds, by the way. Yeah. You guys are the best. Are you guys best. gonna move to Austin soon? Uh, I'm, podcast. I'm not there yet. Oh. Our yeah. ride today was sick. We rode Stone Mountain, which you've never done before. If you come to Dupont, go ride that, and you'll you'll be terrified. Yeah, don't listen to the reviews though, because they'll they'll try to talk you out of it. Yeah, yeah. It's I mean it's a hike a bike up. There's no easy way up. You're hiking, but it's crazy. John, what are you gonna say? <laughs> were you gonna fart right now? I feel like you <laughs> were. No, no, no. I was gonna say something, but does does that Austin guy that we were hanging out with listen to this? Uh, he might, he might but it. probably he was gonna be on it. Like <laughs> we still plan on having him, oh. but <clears throat> why? Well, because he was saying that the one we rode was like the. Hardest like downhill. No, he was. He was just saying it was like a the top. best. Yeah, it was like yeah. one of the best downhills. Oh, I, I guess that doesn't necessarily. He, he I don't think he was necessarily saying like the toughest. I would. I oh. would put it in like the one we rode. Like I would put it in like the top. I mean, if you're trying, like, if you're looking for downhill, so you take out Rocky so Ridge and Ridgeline. He was saying Ridgeline doesn't count. Yeah. He was saying yeah. So like Stone Mountain, Big Rock, Cedar Rock. And then that trail we rode today. Yeah, at least I would include Hickory. I would include Hickory Mountain because that yeah. downhill that that is like technical in yeah. some ways. Yeah. But as far as where Burnt Mountain goes, I mean, it was good. The downhill section, Stone Mountain is the craziest downhill I've ridden in Dupont. Oh, definitely. And then other than that, maybe I'm alone on this, but I think the Cedar Rock downhill is one of the better ones. I think I like it just because of how fast it is and it's longer. Yeah, longer than Big Rock, at least it feels longer. I don't think John's written that one. <clears throat> no, no, I don't think so either. Wasn't Ridgeline like, like a top rated trail, like the number one it's trail? A, yeah, it's supposed to, well, it's supposed to be like the number one flow trail in the country. Yeah, I don't know if that's true, but it's so good. Yeah, it might be, I mean, but... I haven't ridden the other ones, but yeah, I, it's pretty flowy. It's good. Yeah, I mean, it's fun. It's very pedally. If you want to be the fastest guy on it, you're pedaling nonstop. Yeah. Dude, I don't know. Flow at Little Switz is pretty fucking rowdy. Girl. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't even know. If, do they have a trail named that? Uh, no. No, okay. <laughs> but, I mean, they could do a flow trail, but they only have, like, that hill gets smaller every time I go there. Dude, it's so bad. <laughs> it's, I mean, they make it work, but... <laughs> I'm talking you're talking about, about uh, <laughs> shit. Yeah, <you're> ta- <laughs> I'm just talking shit about little sweats. Yeah. And you used to build there. Yeah. I, <laughs> you were a- yeah. <laughs> I was there a lot. Yeah. I don't know. It's all right. I like going there I guess first ride of the I year. Bought, after I bought a 29, I'm like, it, do- it doesn't work. The 29 you- just doesn't work very well there. I don't like it. 
Oh, I I mean I have fun on it there. You should do some backflips. JJ looks like he's having fun. On a hard tail. On a dude. What a guy. Yeah. If you haven't if you're listening to this and you haven't watched my little Switz video, you have to go watch it. Yeah, he gets because that was like that was a video that made me think like, what kind of videos do I really want to do on this channel? Because that is what I want to do. Yeah. But I realize I can't I can't make a compelling video like that based off my skills. <laughs> like yeah. I, just, I don't know. It just got me thinking. So I want to do some more stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. You were recapping the day and we rode DuPont and then we went to the Riveter, which we did not know what time they closed. <laughs> At least we made it there now. Yeah, and I'm like, I mean, we rode a lot today, so it was cool. I mean, why did we ride for like 35 minutes, 40 minutes? Yeah. yeah. Which is fine. Just had a pound the laps in though. Yeah. Which and is annoying. It was rough. Really, like get used to the flow of it when you're just kind of like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah and was... I think that's why I went straight for the big one. Like, I did the medium line twice, and then I was like, well, I guess I don't have a lot of time. Might as well just start working right, out the big line. Yeah. So. Which the big line's not bad. It wasn't, no. The landings were steeper than I expected, but yeah. it was good. Even you saying that, like, sketched me out a little bit. Like, not that, like, it, it would have taken me a little bit before I would have ridden them, but I didn't think they were too bad for being steep. No, they're, they're but nice. I, uh, But I also wasn't, like, at risk of overshooting them either. I did really. overshoot, like, the big one. Like, the, the last, last one. The last one. Actually, the middle one. That's why you got to pull that moto whip, dude. I know. Way you, you, up there. Yeah, your whips, <laughs> your whips were looking good. You know, I just race a lot of jumps. Dude, I think my butt's my, just bigger. I can throw it out there a little better. Yeah, no, without a doubt, your butt is bigger <laughs> than mine. Yeah, it does look pretty good. Does the, it really? The, no, the the whip. The whip. Oh, <laughs> you're talking about my butt, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Anyways, that was our day today. That was us rambling for a bit. Uh, tomorrow we're hitting up Bailey's, and Colin is going to edit a video of it. <laughs> Whoa. Fair. I'll All do right. a Bailey's video. Dude. John, you're blocking the camera. Is my open? No, you're hey, look at look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, on that note, thank you guys for listening. Um, let us know if you got any questions for us if uh, we do this again, which we should. It was fun. Um, and yeah, thanks yep. a lot. Thank you. Peace. That's what they say. Is it? <laughs>